Okay, we have to take another integral. This one's from the MIT integration, be from 2024. This was problem six. We have the integral of cosine x plus cotangent x plus cosecant x plus one over sine x plus tan x plus secant x plus one dx. Okay, to get started with this, at first I was thinking maybe a u substitution was possible because we put the same number of terms in the denominator and numerator. And right away we can see the derivative of sine is cosine, so that's promising. But then we look for the derivative of other terms, like for tan x, we have no secant squared x in the numerator. Secant x, we need secant x tan x. So I think a u substitution is not really going to work. I think what I need to do instead is somehow factor this or rearrange the trig functions. What I want to focus on, I think, just if we look at tan x, for, for tan x, I can write it in terms of sines and cosines. And I can kind of do the same thing with cotangent. I just don't want to do it over there. So cotangent is just the reciprocal, right? Cotangent, cotangent is going to be just cosine x over sine x. But what that does is it kind of gives me a starting point for factoring because we have cosine x here, and then in the cotangent we have cosine x, and then we have sine x here, and then we have sine x here on the tangent. So we can factor a sine x out in the denominator, and we can factor a cosine out in the numerator. So let's just see how this is going to look when I rewrite this. So first we'll factor out this cosine x, and I'm just dealing with like these two terms. I'm not worried about the end part right now. So I factor out cosine x, I mean up with just one, and then cotangent x, when we factor the cosine out, it just becomes 1 over sine x. And then doing the same thing in the denominator, I factor out sine x. And we end up with 1 plus, taking the sine out of that, we end up with 1 over cosine x. Then let's bring all this other stuff along just for completeness. But now this is pretty good because 1 over cosine x, this term right here is just secant x. And so we have secant x plus 1 here and secant x plus 1 here. And then same thing in the numerator, this 1 over sine x, this is just cosecant x, so we have 1 plus cosecant x here and here. So we have, we can factor again, as we have this in common, and then we also have this in common, so we can factor that out in both the numerator and denominator. So rewriting again, factoring out a 1 plus cosecant x here. We can write this as like cosecant x plus 1 times 1, so when we factor that out, this other piece is just going to become cosine x plus 1, and then going ahead doing the same kind of thing in the denominator, we factor out 1 plus secant x, and then we'll create a little 1 right here, and so this is going to be, for our other term, this is going to be sine x plus 1. But now what I want to deal with this, I don't really want this cosecant and secant here, I want everything in terms of sines and cosines. And so what I want to do to try to clean this up is I'm going to multiply in sine x cosine x over sine x cosine x, so I'm just multiplying by 1. So I'm starting with the numerator, what I'll do is I'll distribute this sine x in here, but I'm going to bring the cosine all the way up front. So when I do this, let's rewrite and see what we have. Sine x times 1, this is going to give me sine x. Sine x times cosecant x, that's going to be just a plus 1. And then we'll have over here this cosine x plus 1. And then I'll do the same basic thing in the denominator. I'll take the sine and we'll just bring that up front. We'll just leave that for now. So we'll have that multiplying in cosine x times 1 gives me cosine x. Cosine x to secant x, secant x is just 1 over cosine x those cancel and we have a plus one. And then we'll just copy down our sine x plus one and I'll create the smallest dx in the world right there, just so that I have it. But now we get all kinds of cancellation because cosine x plus one cancel with cosine x plus one, sine x plus one cancel with sine x plus one, and we're just left with cosine x over sine x. So let's just do this integral and then we can finish it off. Okay, now to integrate this, now we could just use a formula because cosine x over sine x is cotangent x. But what I want to do instead, let's just do the u substitution really quick. So I'll make sine x my u, just because it's such an easy u substitution. So then taking a derivative, du is going to be cosine x dx, which is exactly what we have here. So doing this substitution, we end up with just du over u. But for the solution of that, we're just going to get natural log, absolute value of u. I'm just going to back substitute it. So for our final solution, we'll have just natural log, absolute value sine x plus C, and that's it. Okay, there you have it. Good problem from MIT 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.